I'll segment into two two buckets. Um, the, the the first one, and not the most important one by any means, but the first one is a lot of healthcare organizations didn't do well with COVID simply because they weren't financially sound enough to deal with it, um, and didn't have enough resources and enough creativity to be able to deal with it. So, from a financial point of view, up uh, prior to, to 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 COVID, Banner had performed very well financially, so we were well healed. Uh, from a cash perspective. So we were able to deal with having elective surgeries cut off, having the normal things that you would do in a hospital that generate income cut off, and to then absorb uh, a, a, um, a share of the market for helping COVID patients that were higher than our normal market share. Um, the combination of those those things for for organizations that weren't in the same position we are, that they got hurt. So we were able to, to manage our way through that even before the PPP money even showed up. Um, so so that, that part was fairly easy to, to deal with. The part that was really tough and remains to be tough, not just for Banner, but our frontline people are accustomed to a physician doing a diagnosis, prescribing a um, uh, a method to get you well, you bring them into the hospital or treat them in an outpatient center, you fix them and they go home back to their families and they're, and they're, and they're fine. For, for our frontline people to be in a position where no matter what they did, they were losing patients. They, it, it was devastating emotionally and physically because they were garbed in all this stuff. Uh, they, they were having trouble breathing just normally they were watching the demise of people that they couldn't save. That became the equivalent of PTS uh, being the, in, the, in, in the war kind of situation. And we had to recognize that particularly our nurses um, were technically in that mental state and we had to address it that way. But even being able to uh, do that, and we did it from the board level all the way down, we were, um, you know, contributing money to, to our nurses that had to stay over so that they, they could feed their families, even though they couldn't go home. We did a lot of those things. But the thing that we couldn't do is help that distress of not being able to help their patients. And with 16,000 nurses, uh, that's a lot of people that were on the front. Uh, and I'm just talking about the nurses particularly now, the docs are in the same same boat, but the nurses were the key. And then on top of that, across the board nationally, a lot of nurses, since the the first wave of the pandemic kind of subsided, it was too much for them and they've quit. They the quit the, the the industry of being a nurse, which now is putting an additional pressure on the front line because you don't have enough people, just like the airlines have had the same problem, to be able to do your regular job. So there's still a residual effect of the first part of COVID. It's being exacerbated now because the admissions are spiking again. Uh, so, so that's, uh, and we've come up with a lot of unique ways we think and uh, impactful ways to try to minimize the impact on our frontline folks so that they can do their job that they want to do and not have them retreat from, from the industry.